Hey everyone, uh, whoops, wrong screen. Uh, just, there you go. Uh, hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It's uh, Thursday night and we're gonna create some art. It's going to be awesome. Sorry, I kind of jumped ahead there on the uh, on the wrong screen. I wanted to go ahead and jump in. It's a couple of minutes early, but uh, we have a couple of people in the chat already asking a few questions. Uh, so I figured, you know, might as well hop on and answer these instead of typing them up and things like that. Uh, we've got Rome Dog in the house uh, who is wanting to do their own live streaming. So I had a couple of questions about what software I use. Um, these are great questions. So um, I use uh, OBS Studio. Um, and OBS Studio is great. Uh, it's There's some comparable software out there, but what's great about OBS Studio is it's free um, and it's easy to use once you get the hang of it. There's a, there's some more complicated stuff you can do it uh, do in it, but the uh, basics are, are pretty easy to master. Um, so as you notice, I can jump screens so I can like, you know, I can go to this, I can go to my full view. I can jump all the, through all those screens using OBS Studio, so it's really great. The other thing is um, I can use multiple sources. So like when I go into uh, the full view, I've got a uh, webcam in front of me and I've got my, uh, I've got my uh, overhead camera as well. So those are the type of things that you can do in uh, OBS Studio and uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I also have a kid in the house uh, asking uh, what we're working on tonight. Kid's always excited uh, to see what we're working on. Um, I am not working on a uh, uh, an elephant and coffee tonight. I may do that in the future. Um, the the elephant I'm doing tonight is a drawing and charcoal, uh, just so that I can you know kind of. I've never done an elephant before, so I'm kind of curious how it's going to go. Um, uh, let's see, what, what was the other uh, question? Oh, the other question is uh, my Maker's Mark bottles that I'm decorating. Uh, kid was wondering when uh, those are due. They're due at the end of the month. Um, I did spend a little bit of time uh, over the past couple of days uh, doing tests on wine bottles uh, just to see how I, I might approach uh, doing a coffee painting on a bottle. And I, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to do the coffee painting for the bottles on uh, watercolor paper. And then I'm gonna fix the watercolor paper to the bottles using like a, a an acid-free um, archival quality glue. And, uh, and then I think once it's all done, I'm going to like really seal it tight um, with some, uh, probably like polyurethane, I'm not really sure. It's some, some sort of clear coat so that, you know, if somebody's handling the bottle and they're touching my art, they're not gonna like, you know, like mess it up with their like greasy palms or something like that. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll see how that, but that's next week. I, I'm going to work on that next week and I'm going to share that guy with you guys so that you can see the process. Um, for those of you guys who are just tuning in for the first time, uh, I've been commissioned to do some uh, Maker's Mark bottles uh, where I'm decorating the bottles uh, with art. So it, it's going to be kind of a technical challenge. It's going to be a little bit of fun, um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but tonight uh, we are working on a, um, we are working on an elephant picture. And the caveat here is I have never done an elephant. Uh, I, I, It's a weird shape to me, so I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but you guys are pretty forgiving, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, got some people in the house. We got Kid, we got Rome Dog, we've got uh, Richard, we've got Larry, we've got Ben from Treasure Warriors. Uh, we got a pretty full house tonight. So I'm just gonna jump right in and start get, uh, working on this. Um, so the other thing I really wanted to do actually is uh, I wanted to use this this um, paper that I was using on Tuesday uh, again. Um, the great thing about it, again, like I said, it comes in this gigantic roll of like 75 feet. So anytime I wanna just practice drawing, I've got this really great surface to work with. I don't have to like go and find a notebook or anything like that. I just pull out this, uh, this paper, rip myself off a sheet. Now I, I used the scissor here, but as you can see, it's uneven. I don't really care, this is just fun. Um, this, you know, it, it looks cool hanging on the wall. You know, it's just like a random piece of paper. Um, so I really like that aspect of it. I do recommend it. Again, uh, I mentioned uh, on Tuesday, the uh, trick is make sure you get the paper that is acid free. So it's uh, like, it's gonna last, uh, you know, some time and stuff like that. Cause you may end up doing a drawing that you wanna keep, you know, uh, and um, you know, like even if it's rough and stuff, you can still frame this up really nice and everything, but it's not going to last forever if you don't use that uh, that acid-free paper. All right, so that's all I got to say before I jump into this. I'm gonna have a swig of my bourbon and then we're gonna get started. So as you can see, I haven't sketched out anything. I have no idea where this elephant's gonna go. I have a reference picture of an elephant over here on this screen. 
and uh, it's it's kind of like a weird shape. Um, I kind of know that like up here is basically where the head's going to be. So I'm just going to kind of like lay down some um, some mass here. Um, this is going to be like my uh, messy charcoal picture where I'm not really sure what any of this is yet. Kind of figure it out as I go along. I think there's going to be like an eye over here, but I might move some of these shapes around. I'm basically working on shapes here. So you got you got kind of like a head of an elephant. And then so the shape is that the elephant kind of comes down. This is the leg, but oh I'm using a medium piece of charcoal here so it's not too dark. Um oh and haters in the house cool. Hey, how's it going, man? Um yeah, cool. All right. I always like to give a shout out to my audience, my members, whenever you guys show up. You know, if you're lurking and you don't need a shout out, that's cool too. But like if you're gonna if you're gonna chime in and drop a comment, I wanna I wanna I wanna say hi, you know. Part of this is drawing, part of this is like hanging out, part of this community. Now, as you can see, I'm just I'm just kind of like um uh, making some marks here, trying to get an idea of the shapes of this um, this elephant. Because again, I've never drawn an elephant before. <laughs> so it's basically like just trying to get some shapes in here because I don't know what an elephant, it's not like there's any muscle memory in my hand of like how an elephant's supposed to work. You know, like if I'm drawing a, a face of a person, particularly like a female care, a person, um, I kind of have some muscle memory of like what that looks like. Uh, if I'm drawing a horse, I kind of have some of that built in where I kind of know what shapes I'm creating. When it comes to an elephant, there is no muscle memory there. There is no familiarity or anything. So I'm basically just kind of uh, drawing some, um, some shapes and, um, basically some, uh, some shadows too. So like, this is going to be the shadow of the leg. Um, this is going to be the trunk. I want to say nose, but I think it's proper to call it a trunk. Yeah. So I think that's going to be down here. There's going to be some shadow in this that kind of comes up to here. There are some tusks in here and things like that, but we'll worry about those as we go along. Um, so the challenge is I'm doing a lot of blocky stuff here, but now we get into the curve of a, uh, of a trunk. So we'll, we'll sort all this out as we continue going, but I think this is probably pretty good. I think my proportions are okay. So that would kind of come up there. Um, so whenever I'm doing these type of drawings, I'm, I'm kind of using uh, pieces of it as kind of like benchmarks for other pieces. So I know this is going to basically be the eye. You know, you've got... This probably needs to be a lot bigger now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, so this is going to come down further. Uh, use my eraser, kind of lift some of this up because this is... A little short, you know, practice makes perfect, but you can kind of refine some of these things. I don't even need to use an eraser really, because like at this point, I'm not set in stone on any of these uh, marks. They're really light. I can go over them. I can, I can erase them if I want. I can just kind of continue go, going over them. Um, it's only when you really feel comfortable with your marks that you start, you know, making them a little bit darker kind of committing to them and so on. But, let's see. Oh, you guys talking about pirates already? Oh, pirates in the house. How's it going, man? Or woman, I'm not sure. Pi but that could be a female pirate for all I know. <laughs> I don't know. So the, um, the other cool thing is uh, I did end up committing to going to uh, Comic-Con as like a volunteer, the local Comic-Con. It's not a special Comic-Con. It's not like the New York or, or California one. Um, it's just a local one. We still get some celebrities, but they're all like kind of, I, I don't want to diss them by saying they're like B-list celebrities, but I mean, they might be D-list. Uh, but they're they're kind of like, there's no big names for this particular comic con. There have been in the past. There's been some decent people in the past, but these guys are like people from uh, the TV show Charmed. 
back in the day. Um, you know, like Holly Marie Combs is going to be there. Um, the guy who played Spike on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, he's going to be there. Uh, Barbara Eden, uh, who played I Dream a Genie, she's going to be there. That's kind of cool. Like, I wouldn't say that she's a has-been. Like, she's kind of classic. Like, she's never going anywhere, but she hasn't been on television for a long time. And she also is, like, 90 years old. So it, it's not like there, it's a fresh crop of celebrities at this uh, particular Comic-Con, but it's pretty cool. And um, I don't know if I'm going to go for the full three days that I'm scheduled as a volunteer. I might kind of, like, just not do all of that. But I could do up to three days. We'll we'll see. They have me in a cool spot. I'm in the, I'm I'm assisting the comic book artists, so that's kind of cool. You know, like I, I get to go and hang out with the comic book artists. I might actually bring a notepad and um, maybe, let's see. I can't make a big mess, so I can't do charcoal. But I might bring some um, some pen and and ink and stuff and try to do like some live drawings while I'm there. That'd be kind of cool. But it, it would be kind of cool to pick the brains of, like, um, comic book artists. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Oh, we got Sapient Nobad in the house. How's it going? We got Pirate. We've got um, ooh, Sugar Daddy. How's it going? Uh, would Gorman see that as an elephant? Yeah, where's Bill Gorman? The, Bill Gorman is the elephant guy. Um, hopefully he sees this as an elephant because it's supposed to be an elephant. So this is going to be, like, a basic tusk over here on this side. And then... This one over here kind of extends out a little bit further. Yeah, Bill Gorman's the elephant guy. So I wasn't going to originally do an elephant because, um, you know, with those coffee paintings, I'm really trying to do like North American woodland creatures. Uh, in fact, the next one I'm going to do that's not one of those bottles is uh, a raccoon. Um, like kids, kids got that raccoon inspired uh, room and I, I want to do one for uh, for that that's in uh, coffee painting just because I think that'd be kind of cool. So that's the next coffee painting I'm doing. That's not the bottle. The bottles are kind of like, I have to do, I have to basically recreate some of my previous artwork because the design I submitted was of previous artwork. So like, I don't remember what I submitted. I think one of them was the deer I did. Maybe one was a horse could have been a, a ram. I don't know. I'm going to have to look at all those and, um, see what I actually submitted. I think I get to choose two of the three. But basically the design has to look like one of those previous pictures that I've done. So I don't get like a lot of, I, I get a little bit of like artistic leeway there. I get to kind of create it however I want, but I, I do have to kind of like make it look like the design. All right, so I think this is looking decent. As far as like where things are. Again, it's not too dark yet, so I can kind of move things around if I need to. I think I'll just kind of like let the leg down here kind of just fade off or something, but yeah, I am a little bit nervous about this one because I have never done an elephant, so like I don't even as a kid, like as a kid, I used to draw all kinds of weird things. Like, you know, they tell you like when you're trying to learn to draw, you really should just like draw everything that you see, right? Like if you're in the kitchen and you see a refrigerator, draw, draw the refrigerator, um, basically draw everything just so that you get a sense of, you know, size and proportion and how things work in a 3d space, all of that stuff. Um, because I wasn't really a person who, was around elephants, I guess, you know, like I live in the United States, we don't have a lot of elephants unless you go to the zoo. Um, I wasn't really exposed to these guys. So I never drew these guys. I drew things like chickens. We always had chickens running around or, you know, dogs and cats and things like that. That's, that's always something we're going to have running around the house as a little kid. But as you can see, the process here is just kind of, you know, scribbling, right? So it's like um, some of my other kind of scribble arts. You just kind of scribble until you feel comfortable that everything's in this place. And then you kind of smooth things out, maybe add some details, do some refinements. So somewhere back here. So again, following the shape. So in, in the reference art, I see that this kind of comes behind the ear. 
and then juts out, and this kind of forms the back of the um of the elephant. And then this all down through here kind of comes back towards the legs. So you can you can draw like really expressively like this just by following shapes, right? Because like you're not locked into any of these marks. Uh, they're just scribbles, right? I mean, they're there. Like you have to you have to ultimately account for them. You know, do something with them, but you know. They're, they could just be texture at this point. They're, they're not, you're not really locked into them being anything until you, you know, ultimately commit to them. So lined up with the trunk. And again, you see that I'm basing new marks. So I want the end of this ear to like line up kind of basically with the start of the trunk or like the uh, tusk here. And then ultimately over here with the trunk. Um, and then this kind of comes back up in here. So that's, that's kind of how I kind of draw freehand from scratch. Oh, Rum Dogs uh, says, uh, you should ask Barbara Eden what her number is. <laughs> Make her feel hot again. Hey, man, you know, that lady, she's 90 years old and she's still out there. To me, that's kind of hot. You know, like, if you can survive to be 90 as a, as a woman, um, well, women live longer than men anyway, so I, I guess it doesn't really matter. But, you know, like, she is forever cemented herself in Holly as a Hollywood legend, you know, like you may not know who Barbara Eden is the actress, um, but you know who I dream a genie is, you know, that's part of TV history. So like, I, I didn't know her name before. Um, I noticed that she was on the uh, roster to appear at Comic-Con, but you know, I know the show, the show is classic. Um, her and what's the, um, I don't know who plays uh, the bewitched lady, but I don't. I don't even know if she's still alive. But she she is also like a television icon. Uh, whoever plays Samantha, I think her name is. Anyway, yeah, I would love. So like, I am going to make an effort to uh, talk to Barbara Eden because that's kind of how it goes when you uh, when you volunteer, you get some time. I mean, not a lot of time. People are busy. Like, they're there to do, do, like, autographs and meet with fans and things like that. But you, you know, as a volunteer, you do get some time on the floor with them. And um, you can talk to them for a little bit. And, you know, some sometimes people volunteer just to get, you know, signing, uh, like, their own autographs and stuff like that. Um, all right. So this really... This is way too much of a gap. I need to bring these together because there's really like two legs here. There's one in the front. So you guys distracted me with Barbara Eden questions. <laughs> Elizabeth Montgomery. Thank you, Shigo Daddy. Yes. I, so she's not going to be there, but I would love to meet her if she's still alive. I don't know if she is. Uh, but Barbara Eden, she's like in her 90s and stuff. So like, that's impressive to me. Now, I thought maybe that'd be too old and stuff, but they had some older, older people in the past show up at these things, you know, like the Star Trek crew, the original Star Trek, uh, Nichelle, Nichelle, Nick, Nichelle Nichols was there once. That's hard to say. Um, I think she passed away too, but there, those were, those guys were all in their eighties. Hell, William Shatner, he's, he's well into his eighties. I think he's like almost 90. Leonard Nimoy passed away in the past couple of years. It sucks. I really like the original Star Trek crew. Hell, um, Charles Stewart, um, Charles Patrick, uh, Patrick Stewart. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick Stewart. He's um, he's pretty old himself, and he was from the new generation. <laughs> All right. So I do think that the basic shape of the um, the elephant is there, and uh, I think I think I'm pretty happy. Uh, I think that this stuff back here really just needs to be background. I don't think that that needs to be there. I think that the leg probably comes off maybe around here. And then the stuff here is probably wrong. So I'll lift some of that up. All right, so I think that that's good enough to uh, kind of start committing to, I think, at this point. So what I mean by committing is... Um, you know, I'll get a, uh, a darker piece of charcoal and I'll come back over and start, um, you know, mapping out some of these uh, darker shades or shadows and such. Hey, Bill Gorman's in here. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, so there was a question of whether or not you like elephants and whether you recognize this as an elephant or not, as our resident expert on elephants, Bill. I do like elephants, like whenever I get to the zoo, they're really cool. It was um, it's kind of a choice between, I. so my coffee paintings, again, are like North American woodland creatures and so on, right? So far. Um, so I haven't really had a chance to do any kind of like African type uh, creatures or jungle type creatures. So I really wanted to do that. So you've got elephants, you've got giraffes, you've got lions and tigers and stuff like that. So of those, I decided to do the elephant tonight. But I do think that I'm going to explore some of those, those other wildlife creatures. Yeah, mammoth. It could be, a, yeah, this, this is just a bald mammoth. That's what it is. Thanks, Richard. Appreciate that. So I was looking through the, the comic book artists that are going to be there tomorrow. And uh, because that's, again, that's where they have me working is I'm supposed to be assisting uh, comic book artists with, I have no idea, I guess, like if they need water or if like there's, you know, like crowd control or something like that around their booth. I don't know how that works, but anyway, I'm supposed to be assisting them. So I was looking through the list of comic book creators. Now, I don't know a lot of comic book creators. I really don't. So like my comic book experience is basically Marvel. So like I know a few Marvel um, artists and writers and things like that. And then, you know, I'm very familiar with the movies. And I grew up reading uh, Marvel comics like X-Men and the Avengers and so on. Um, and I read a lot of G.I. Joe comics. But I don't know who modern comic book artists are. So there are some older folks that are going to be there, like Jim Strank at Stranko. I recognize him because he did like old Captain America um, art back in the day. But as far as like some of these younger comic book artists, I have no idea who they are. So like, it kind of sucks because I'm going to be there. And, um, you know, the, the idea is that you're supposed to be like, you're supposed to be hospitality essentially. So you're supposed to be there, uh, making every, sure everybody's, you know, got what they need and that everybody's having a good time and so on. Um, but I don't know any of these people, right? So like, I'll be sitting there with them and I'll be like, uh, I'll be sitting across. So I, so I actually have a story about that. I went to a comic con one time and, um, they had the uh, artist who uh, came up with the character Nomad. So if you don't know the story behind Captain America, at one point he did. So they kind of touched upon this in the movie at, you know, at some point uh, Steve Rogers in the movie kind of became like uh, an enemy of the state. The government was after him and so on. And if you notice his costume, he had ripped off the star and he ripped off all his badges and stuff like that. He was basically a man without a country at that point in, in the movies. Well, that's kind of based on this, uh, this storyline from the comics, uh, where Captain America became, uh, a character called Nomad. And he was basically a man without a country. He, he, uh, he was no longer Captain America. Um, he kind of went his own route and this is the guy who created that character and he did all the artwork and stuff like that. And the thing is, I had no idea who he was. I was sitting there talking to the guy and stuff like that. And he was trying to tell me, yeah, I created, like he had all these nomad comics and stuff on his, um, at, at his booth. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like I barely know the story and stuff like that, but it's kind of neat that you got all these comics there. And he's like, yeah, I drew those. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't even know that guy back in the day. I, I've gotten better though. I've been learning more about some of these guys. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that like whoever they pair me up with, I'll, I'll uh, do a quick Google search <laughs> and learn more about them. But I, I am not going to know who they are going into it. I believe Bill is a mammoth man. Yes. Mammoths, uh, well, elephants are like bald mammoths, essentially. So you can see how I'm getting some of those, um, whoops, <laughs> might be a coffee painting after all, or a bourbon painting. Um, so you can see how I'm getting some of these, uh, 
I get this one. Getting some of the shadows in here and um, starting to kind of like take take some shape from that. Kind of cool. Let's see. And again, at this point, everything is really loose and expressive. So like if you're into doing this stuff, this is this is the approach that I take to these charcoal pictures where you're just basically creating mass on the page and then you're refining it into shapes. And the shapes, you know, so I, I've talked about this before, but the trick to uh, seeing the shapes, especially when it comes to like shadows, is you look at your reference picture, or you look at your model or whatever it is you're drawing and you kind of like squint your eyes. So if I squint my eyes, all those shadows, all those details go away and all I see is shapes. So that's what I'm kind of doing here is, is I'm squinting at my reference picture, seeing those shadows, and then trying to like translate it to um, the, the canvas, which in this case is a, basically a brown paper sack. And, you know, for the most part, you don't have to worry about like a lot of detail, especially at this stage. You can always add more detail later if you want to refine it even further. But at this stage, and this could be the only stage, like you can just be done with this, right? I mean, is, if you feel like this has captured the elephant, which I don't, uh, but you know, you could, you could just stop here and you have a very expressive drawing um, representing like an elephant um, where things are kind of suggested. and and. You, you kind of go from there on how far down the rabbit hole you want to go as far as like actual features. So um, I want to add more to this, so I'm going to keep going. But you could just you could just say that I have suggested an elephant here and that's true. You know, you, you've done your work. Um, I think I can suggest more in this, but. But it really is about suggesting different uh, features. So like I. I am um, I'm suggesting some legs down here at the moment. So I am making marks to kind of back that up. And then we've got some shadows from the ear coming down here. So I would like to um, actually bring some charcoal with me and just draw while I'm hanging out at Comic-Con. But I don't, I don't think I can do that. It's, it's too much of a mess, but I made, I made, pack my pens and stuff. I, I may not actually do anything. I might be too busy. Um, I've done volunteer work at these uh, Comic Cons before, and you never really know what you're going to end up doing. You know, uh, the idea is that you have a particular role and you usually end up with like a lot of free time available to you, but you never really know. You're, you're basically in the, um, in the hospitality um, mode there where you're just trying to make people happy. I mean, it's not a real job or anything like that. You're, you're just a volunteer. You, you don't get paid or anything. I mean, you get free lunch. <laughs> so that, that's nice. They buy you lunch and, uh, you do get to hang out with celebs if you want, um, to a degree, like they, you can't be annoying or anything like that, but you do hang out with these people. But for me, it's, it's, it's really cool to meet the artists. Every, every time I've ever gone to one of these, I meet somebody who I didn't realize I did know from some whatever, like the, um, they're usually named Larry's. <laughs> okay. Okay. Larry. Um, but yeah, so like there's Larry Hama from the GI Joe comics, Larry Elmore from the Dungeons and Dragons art. Um, I seem to run into like a lot of Larry artists. <laughs> And uh, that's just the way it goes. I don't know why. Like, so I'm gonna suggest some some of these lines in the trunk. I think that this needs to kind of come bring this back in a little bit. I should do a dragon. Uh, a dragon copy art. I think that'd be cool. I haven't done one. I need to branch out from just doing my furry woodland creatures. Because, like, 
even though I've got a lot of furry woodland creatures left to go before I feel like I've done the ones that I want to do. Like, I, I really want to do that raccoon um, just because I haven't done a raccoon yet. And I think that would look really cool in that expressive style. And there's a lot of other creatures that I haven't done that I really want to do. But at some point, I feel like I need to branch out and do other things. E even if it's in the same medium, they just need to be other other things I want to explore. I mean, this guy's starting to look like a, like an elephant. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Do you think it's looking like an elephant? Um, at this point... It would still be in the imagining phase, like you have to kind of like see it or not. Um, so I guess I I shouldn't I shouldn't assume that everybody can see an elephant. I I feel like people could. So can you draw from memory? Um, if it's a clear memory, so I can draw. I can draw a lot of things from memory. I don't know how well they'll turn out. Like, I can draw a dragon from memory because I drew so many of them as a kid. It'd have to be something that I've drawn a lot to where there's basic... It's, it's part of its memory up here and then part of its, like, hand muscle memory, if that makes sense. Um, so at this point, I think I've seen enough horses just because of where I live, where there's basically a horse field every five feet. Um, I feel like I've... I've seen enough horses where I can I can basically create a horse picture, no problem. Um, a dog I can do because I've you know I've drawn enough dogs, cats, um, people for the most part. I can I can draw a realistic person, maybe not a particular person uh, from memory. Uh, dragons, absolutely. Ninjas. I, I draw, I've drawn a lot of ninjas. Batman. I can, I can draw you a Batman from memory. Um, those are not a problem, but you know, something like an elephant, which I've never drawn before. And I don't encounter on like a regular basis, those sorts of things I would struggle with probably drawing from memory. And, um, I would say that this is just my own personal opinion. Everybody's going to to differ, but I would say there is never a situation in modern times, unless you're like Tom Hanks and Castaway, where you're like on a deserted island, where you would ever have to draw from memory. Just because we all have phones and we all have Google and there is like a plethora of reference photos to, to work with. So unless you are in the situation where you're trying to draw Helen Hunt from memory, <laughs> because you know you ended up on a deserted island with wilson and all that um you're probably never going to need to draw from memory unless you're drawing somebody maybe you're drawing uh, a person or something that you once knew that you no longer uh is no longer around like maybe they passed away or, or something like that um and there's no photos of them or you wish there were more photos and you know, then you're, then you're getting maybe a little creative and stuff and you're trying to like create something that doesn't exist in the real world. I, d I don't know. I don't know. But like that, that's probably like a more unique case, but yeah, I mean, it really depends. It really depends on what it is. Oh, thanks. Uh, B -I -B -I -C. Oh, we're only like 40 minutes in. Yeah. Um, I think it's the style B I C. Um, you know, like if I'm if I'm drawing more tightly, it seems like it takes longer. If I'm drawing in this loose style, I feel like you can get a lot suggested in a short period of time. Like this dude doesn't have an eye open, so it's just kind of like some some wrinkled mess up here. But I love this style. I, I do. I, like, I feel like this style is, like, this is where I want to be as an artist. I'm not always, I'm not always um, able to produce quality work in this style where you're just kind of sketching and scribbling a creature. But, you know, for, for this type of drawing where you are just kind of suggesting things through scribbles and so on, I mean, an elephant is basically the right way to go. Because they have these faces that are like just kind of basically leather with with eyes. 
And it's just like a mass of wrinkles and, you know, elephants. Um, gorillas have the similar faces. I did a gorilla one time, which, uh, you know, actually BIC has, I think. Um, and um, again, those are just these wrinkled messes. And I think it's cool, though. I, I love this style. I really do. Like, I, I love watching other people draw this way. So when when I like watching other people draw this way and I feel like I'm imitating them, that makes me feel like I'm progressing, I guess, as an artist. Wow, that elephant quickly emerged. See, I feel like you guys stepped away for a moment. Like, if, I feel like you guys disappeared and then came back and, and then, like, you noticed that the elephant was, like, was on the page. <laughs> but that's totally fine. I'm just making an observation. Put a little bit of shadow on here. Yeah, I wish I could draw um, in this style um, all the time consistently for people. That would be awesome. Like, if I could do this, if I could draw people this fast, this way, with this style, I feel like I could accomplish my goal of drawing people in public. Which is, you know, it's lame because I don't do it because I, I it's one of the things that kind of scares me, but it is one of the things that I want to do. I want to, I want to draw people in public kind of in this style. At least I can go out to the safari and draw elephants like this. That's cool. Maybe um, sometime this summer, I might go up to the uh, Cincinnati Zoo, which is really nice, and draw some animals up there. I'll take you guys with me. I don't know if we can do a live stream from the zoo. I don't know how their connection is, but I can certainly record some stuff and bring it back. Yeah, I, this needed eraser is like really sticky right now. Love to see a raccoon in coffee. That is going to look cool, I think. I think the the raccoon is going to look really cool in coffee. That's why I was I was saying. Um, so I wanted to do a raccoon anyway, but also Kid is like the collector of raccoons. So I kind of want to make sure that Kid gets that raccoon. Like if somebody has a favorite animal or something, that's the person I want to have that animal that I do. Like. I might I might mess around and send this to Bill Gorman just because uh, he's into elephants. Well, we'll see how it goes. But I do like this style. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, when you're doing something like this style, I'm not there yet, but there's, um, there's a point where you start wondering if you're overworking it. And again, I'm not there yet, but I want to keep it loose and expressive. So I don't want to go past that point. Um, I kind of feel like you can draw, uh, horses in this way too so like i haven't i never seem to find the time to go on these like drawing excur excursions that i have planned in my mind um but i do have a drawing excursion where i want to go out into one of these horse um uh, farm like paddocks fields whatever you want to call them uh down to um one of the tracks so like the uh keeneland spring meet is starting up here soon I would love to go to that. I think that's, I think that's in April. Maybe that's in, no, I think that's in April. Um, so that's coming up soon. I would love to go out there and draw horses, like, you know, on site in this style. The problem is if you, if you are drawing it in public, you know, you do end up with crap all over your hands. So like you need to bring some, uh, some little wipes. So like I, I would love to um take charcoal and draw tomorrow at this uh at this event, but I do think it's going to have to be something more sanitary, like I don't know, it could be like graphite pencils. Those are those don't really make a big mess for me. Like it depends on how you your your own personal way of drawing. 
But to me, I've never really had a problem getting really messy with uh, graphite pencils. But again, you know, like, don't overthink these lines. They're just meant to be like these wrinkled messes that kind of are put in here. Um, you're you're basically drawing some of this stuff the way you would draw a, a tree trunk, you know? Um, just random lines going everywhere. Uh, this is the perfect animal to, to uh, take on as a scribble art. You do burn through your kneaded erasers this way, though, because, like, you end up with, like, a lot of <clears throat> charcoal on them. I wonder how much charcoal I actually inhale doing charcoal pictures. I might have to watch that. I used to be a smoker, like, back in the day. Like, I, I quit a long time ago, but um, it would suck if all that health benefit from quitting smoking came back in the form of like inhaled charcoal dust <laughs> like like um you know this is kentucky like we actually do have um uh people who work in uh coal uh, coal mines and things like that so like it would be weird to show up at the doctor's office complaining of black lung from being an artist because <laughs> like those guys who actually work underground you know they they those guys put in the uh the sweat and tears and stuff it, it would be weird to show up with the same symptoms as those guys just because you drew pictures. Hey, Husker Du! Thanks, uh, Nomad. Thanks, Rum Dog. Uh, thanks, Corbin. Uh, let's see, Hater says, uh, since the beginning of your live stream, I've been watching it on my TV, tablet, and PC at the same time. Cool, yeah. I even brought my uh, tablet with me to the kitchen while I was cooking. Oh, what you cooking there, man? Like, I know you guys have some uh, really good food over there. Like, London is, like, known for their food. So, if you say you're, you're like, eating cereal or something, I'll be very disappointed. But, you know, I am kind of curious what you're eating. Uh, I do appreciate you uh, you watching on so many different devices. Uh, one of the things that I have a challenge with, um, you know, as far as getting into that YouTube partner program is uh, watch hours. Like, I don't I don't have enough watch hours. And um, what kind of sucks is, like, they, uh, they count watch hours for the last 365 days. So, like, I've been streaming for, like, two years now, and all my... Um, all my hours from the previous year are like falling off the calendar as I'm putting on new ones. So I don't know if I'll ever be in that partner program. They, the uh, restrictions for it are pretty, they're like high barriers for like a show like this, where it's just like us hanging out, you know, it's not like I'm a, it's not like I'm Bob Ross or anything like that, where I can pull the numbers that they want in order to put you in the partner program. But um, it is what it is. But I do appreciate you watching on a bunch of different screens. That that does help with the watch hours. Maybe maybe this year I'll get into that partner program. Maybe not. But like that's the dream. I think like I would love. Like I I, I don't think it's ever going to happen. But I would love to. Uh, one of my dreams is um, to be able to just kind of like draw pictures for people and never have to charge for like, you know postage to send it to them or you know like even a tip or a commission or anything like that i would just love to draw pictures uh for people for free especially of their pets that passed away and things like that that's my ultimate goal and in my mind in my fantasy world youtube would pay for that by you know being in that partner program having ads and stuff like that and if you think that that's not realistic, you're probably right. But also, <laughs> uh, the uh, the thing that I kind of like base that idea on is um, there's a channel 
where the guy just goes around. You guys maybe have, have seen this, uh, where the guy goes around and he finds like lawns that are like crazy overgrown and everything. And he just goes there and he mows that lawn and he, and he does like a time lapse of him mowing the lawn. And it's so satisfying to watch. And, uh, he doesn't charge people to like mow their lawn. He just does it. Um, just because like, you know, the, uh, platforms and stuff are paying for it. So, you know, he, he doesn't feel the need to pass that, that expense along to people. Um, so they, anyway, I think that'd be awesome. You know, like if, if I ever get to that point where, uh, YouTube is like sending me ad revenue or something like that. Um, and then, you know, I get to draw people's pictures for free. That would be cool. Like, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to sell any pictures. I don't want it. I don't want that. I don't want to be like in that kind of an art sphere. I want to be, I want to be the person who's just having fun with it and, um, you know, doing a good job for people, doing a good deed. That's my, that's my dream. Maybe one day, you know, like I'll probably end up in that partner program eventually. You know, we'll see. But in the meantime, I just draw pictures. It's fine. I hang out with you guys. It's all cool. I mean, chicken tikka masala, fried rice, and baked naan bread. Nan, nan bread. I never even figured out how to pronounce that. I love that stuff. That stuff is so good. That sounds like a really, um, like, uh, that, that sounds like a basically like an Indian diet. I love Indian food. Um, when it comes to like, you know, the type of ethnic food that you can get around here, that's top of my list. Uh, here where I live, there's like a Mexican restaurant basically on every single street corner. There's not a lot of like Indian re restaurants, but there are some in town. I love that stuff. I love that. I love Mediterranean food. Um, I love, I love, um, Cajun and Creole dishes, like what you'd find in New Orleans. There's a, there's a place called Bourbon and Toulouse in town that is so good at Jambalaya and Etouffee and I love that stuff. Man, I want some of that now. You guys have the best meals. Every, every time we, like, it, every single stream, it, at some point we're talking about food. And you guys make me so hungry that, you know, by the time I'm done, drawing pictures for you guys. I want to go and eat an entire freaking pizza or something like that because like that's the headspace I'm in when I'm done. So you can see it. So after the basic shapes are in there, uh, a lot of it's just refining the shape. So, um, uh, here's some tips. Okay. So like when approaching a drawing, yeah, I can talk about that. All right. So when approaching a drawing and you're looking at a blank piece of paper and you're wondering what to do, the very first step is to start marking out your shapes, right? And to do that, you know, like you work with the biggest shape you can see first, right? So like, if you notice when I started, I started with the face and I started with this line here coming down and so that I can get these shadows in because those are the big spaces, right? So the big shape of the ear, the big shape of the face, the big shape of the, um, the uh, trunk here, those are the big shapes. Um, and then once you got those in there and you feel comfortable with those, then you start moving into smaller shapes. So there's some smaller shapes in this ear, for example, that's the whole reason why I'm bringing this up. Um, the small shapes are these like little, little shadow areas and stuff that kind of form the crinkle of the ear. Again, I've never drawn an elephant. So part of the fun of this is for the first time, I'm looking at all these, uh, these features of an elephant that I had never considered before. Yeah, I should probably talk about that. This is one of the most rewarding things about drawing. I've mentioned this before, but I don't want to like, just let it pass without calling attention to it. This is an animal that I have never drawn before and that I can recall ever in my entire life. I'm drawing it now and I am noticing how there's crinkles in the ear. Even if I went to the zoo, I'm not in that observation mode like I am when I'm drawing. And I think that that's, I think that's really important. I think that's something that, you know, I do want to call attention to for other artists out there and stuff. The reward of drawing, one of the rewards of drawing is that you're paying passionate attention to an animal that you may not have ever 
really cared about before. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think these animals are beautiful and I care about them when I go to the zoo. I care about their preservation. I care about that kind of stuff. But I've never, until I drew one, felt that that I'm paying um, that sort of attention to it that I call the passionate attention that I'm paying it now, you know. I'm... I'm passionately looking for different features to rep represent in my art that, um, you know, I have never paid to an elephant before. This is kind of cool. Um, I would have never really noticed that, you know, the ears, like you watch the movie Dumbo and, um, you know, you just see the big floppy ears and everything. You don't, you don't think about the structure of that ear and so on. Which is odd because I do care about the structure of ears. One, whenever I'm drawing a human ear, I can't. <laughs> like, they always turn out terrible. And then I I always draw the uh, puppy ears and stuff like that because they're so cute. So I, I do care about ears. It's um, it's a lot of it, It's a great honor to draw this elephant's ears. There you go. I feel like I'm, like, overstating this. But I don't, also, I don't really feel like I'm overstating this. Like... It may sound like I'm overstating this, but I'm taking a lot of joy out of drawing this ear uh, for all the reasons I'm saying, which is, uh, it's just kind of cool to see these different features that you had never cared about before. Um, uh, I guess another way to look at it is like, you know, I, I'm into like astronomy and I'm really looking forward to the eclipse that's coming up in uh, April, but you know, I walk around at night all the time and I barely ever look up at the moon, but sometimes, sometimes I'll get that telescope out and I'll look at that, that moon and I'm seeing it for the first time. When I look at the moon through that telescope, I am seeing features and craters and things like that on the moon that I never really think about in my day to day. You know, I never really acknowledge when I'm looking at the moon and when I'm going for a walk at night or something like that. That's what I mean by like passionate attention. Um, you know, like when you're looking at the moon, moon through a telescope, you're feeling that kind of passionate attention. When you're drawing a picture of an elephant, a person, a dog, you know, that sort of stuff, you're feeling the same thing. You know, it's an intimate bond with this, with the thing that you're drawing, you know, it's, it's kind of weird to say, but it, it is, it is uh, like, you know, at some level, um, I have a connection with this, this elephant in some way, like without making it weird, there's a connection there. Like, I don't even know this elephant's name, but there's still a connection there. Ever see an elephant pee is like 15 gallons in two seconds. Thanks, Bill. Fun facts with Bill. Yep. When an elephant pees, it takes a little while. Yes, I actually have seen that. I saw that at a um, at a zoo once. They uh, they were doing some elephant training, um, just you know for the public and stuff like that. And that that elephant did have to pee for quite some time. They have very large bladder. They're large creatures to begin with. So I would imagine they just have these like really large bladders They get filled up and then, you know, they probably aren't like humans where they feel like they need to drain themselves all that often. And then like when they do, it's just like, let's get this out of the way because I'm not going to worry about it for a while. Let's see what else we got in here. I always wanted to ask a Brit, what is the, the heck is brown sauce? That's a great question. Um, Larry, I reckon you're talking about HP sauce, aren't you? What is HP sauce? Is that like Harry Potter sauce? <laughs> like, when a Brit person says HP, I'm thinking Harry Potter. What is brown sauce? Now I'm curious. Hi, I'm you, woo. I love that name. I'm Iwu. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I like the way that sounds. I'm Iwu. Very cool. You do have like these random like 
cut line. I wonder, I need to look at a baby elephant now because I'm kind of curious if they come out looking all wrinkled like this. I don't know what the end of this, uh, this trunk looks like. I'm gonna kind of leave it hanging. We doing on time? Oh, we still got like another hour. So I think I am going to switch to like my blending stump for some of this stuff, even though I would mostly been doing it by hand. It's just when I look at this stump, I'm like, I don't know if I can get my finger in there really. Smooth some of this stuff out. So this is where you can kind of fill in some of the, the shadows. Now, again, remember on this brown paper, the brown itself is your midtones, right? So you're, so when you're using charcoal, your charcoal becomes your shadows. The brown itself is your midtones. You don't have to like, you know, use charcoal for for that part. And then I do have this white charcoal over, over here for <clears throat> highlights when, you know, towards the end and so on. So. That's an important distinction. It's what I love about this paper. I love the um, I love the texture of the paper. I love the feel of the paper, all of that stuff. But really, I like that it's toned. And again, you know, I mentioned Tuesday when we were doing another piece of art on this kind of paper. You can get toned paper. You know, you don't have to get this um, this parcel material like what I've been using. I just like this parcel material because it comes in like a big old roll. Like if I wanted to do, to do a, like a life size, not maybe not like a life size elephant, but a larger elephant, I could, you know. Um, that's what I like about this paper. But the the fact that it's toned is, is not is not consequential. You can go off and get toned paper from basically any Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Amazon or whatever. And I do recommend tone paper. I, I should say that. So like you can use um, like white paper and, and everything. And, and obviously you've seen me use uh, white paper for like charcoal pictures and stuff like that. And it works out. Um, but also, you know, this is just a different style and different way of drawing that uh, I, I like. I really like. Reckon brown sauce is a peculiar term for American barbecue sauce. Huh. So it's just barbecue sauce? That doesn't sound very special. <laughs> what is that Szechuan sauce or whatever they were talking about on Rick and Morty? That they used to, like, it was some sort of, like, um, Asian sauce that they were going nuts for on uh, Rick and Morty and the fact that like McDonald's was out of it was like bad. I don't know. But I'm just going to kind of really darken this area in because I like, you know, using um, shadow and light to kind of direct the eyes. So I like that, you know, you have it really light up here and then it comes down into like shadow areas. Even if this isn't in the reference picture, which it largely is. Um, let's see, where is that? Where's that fourth leg at? One, two. I don't know. I'm going to have to put it in here maybe. All right, I'm just going to kind of darken all of this in. So I like that you have the dark down here that kind of leads your eye into through the through the picture, not necessarily into a particular place. Barbecue sauce. The kinder's hot honey barbecue sauce is amazing. Mm. Yeah, I want some barbecue now. You guys suck. You guys get me so hungry. I, like, you guys, 
you guys can take a break and go into the kitchen, get yourself something to eat. I can't do that. I need to keep snacks under my table so that like when I'm doing these live streams and you guys start talking about food and I can start getting hungry, I can just kind of like munch on something while drawing. So again, some of the th this line work is just kind of like making marks and hashing, hatching, I guess, not hashing. Um, but it also kind of like creates its sort of texture and stuff that is um, in the uh, reference picture as well. So, and I think there'd be a tail over here. So, I represent that. It doesn't have to, like, be photorealistic or anything like that. I just want to kind of suggest that there's, like, a little tail coming off the end here. All right, so I feel like that's a good place. I don't know about these... get a little bit of a separation here so that you know that there's two legs. It doesn't have to be that defined. Kind of. I think that's fine. And then just kind of smooth all of this out. Okay, um, let me clean my hand a little bit. I can use my glass here to kind of, well, there's no condensation on Oh, This is good bourbon, by the way. I feel like I'm like guzzling through it tonight. Mmm, Hot Pockets, now we're talking. All right, so I think this is a good point to come in and kind of like think about some of these highlighted areas. So there's some obvious ones that I'll go ahead and take care of real quick. So obviously the uh, the um, the tusks are white, right? So we can come in, we can highlight that. And this is what I really like about this brown paper. So like if we were doing this elephant on white paper, there's no way that I could emphasize those those um, those tusks the way that they really should be for like an elephant uh, drawing. So like there are features of this elephant that really need to stand out in order to sell the idea that this is not just an elephant, but a really well done elephant, you know, with all the features that make up an elephant, those t tusks are so important for the, to sell the idea that this is a, uh, this is a cool elephant. So I could have done that probably on white paper, but it wouldn't have really come, come out as well as it is here. So you get this, really stark tusk that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And this is why I like that brown paper, that tone paper versus, um, you know, the white paper that I've used for some, now don't get me wrong. I pr probably will in the future use, um, like white paper for charcoal pictures. I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, I'm just saying that it's a different type of picture to be able to put in these kind of highlights. I think that's really cool looking. HP sauce and brown sauce are the same and it's typically a type of brown sauce, which is commonly used as a condiment is made from a combination of tam tamarind and tomatoes. Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know if that's technically a barbecue sauce like what we have here in the U.S. I think barbecue sauce here in the U.S. is a combination of ketchup <laughs> and mustard. Thank you, Relentless. Yes, the uh, the the skin texture is very important. Um, and I appreciate the compliment, but yeah, the skin texture for an elephant is super important. Um, 
So, you know, you want to really emphasize these, these, uh, these tusks, and then you want to kind of like call attention to the creases in the uh, face and, and so on. So I don't want to get, so I don't want to um, get as highlighty as I am with these tusks and some of these other areas, but you know, with this white, you can kind of come in and just kind of emphasize some areas that are catching the light. Now down here in this trunk, this is mostly in shadow, but you can kind of like grab a little bit of the creased area, maybe up here or something. This is catching the light, assuming the light's up here in this corner, which it sounds probably good. But you don't want this to be as bright as this. So like you kind of want to leave this like a little gray and so on. You don't really want to get overboard with this, um, with these parts. Because you don't really want to distract from the, uh, the other bright areas. Now, as you get up here into this skull area, I guess we can call it. Then you can kind of get a little bit more, you know, oh, more areas uh, highlighted with this, um, this highlight. And, you know, I can use this or I can use this. This is a little bit softer. So if I use this, you know, I'll cover more area, but also it's going to be a lot brighter, which I feel like is okay up here. And you want to keep it sketchy like this. Uh, that that kind of emphasizes the style. But like if you're going to be sketchy with the charcoal, you got to be sketchy with the highlights. I put on Tarzan writing on top of the outfit. <laughs> uh, you know, Tarzan's on this bill. You just can't see him because he's behind the ear. <laughs> yeah, Tarzan was here the whole time. So this is this white is actually really good for like just marking because like you don't really see this line up here um, because it's not meant to be like dark. Uh, but if I come in, especially with this pencil, it'd be cool. So like I can I can define this ear line a little bit better with this white mark. So that kind of completes that. I could put some white up here. This is kind of random, but also like a little bit controlled. Like you are looking at the lights in your reference picture. And you know, you can get, you can, you can alter things as needed just to make it a really cool picture. But um, for the, for the most part, this, the light is catching on this um, elephant uh, head in this corner. Move some of this white out. Yeah, like that. Cool. So, um, oh, thanks, Tom. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, Tom. Um, you've created a lot of depth. Um, I I feel like I could walk in uh, right under the elephant um, head to its chest. Probably not a good idea in real life. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Like, these guys, I don't think they're mean. Unless they're probably like threatened. I don't know enough about uh, elephants to speak. Like, if you live near an elephant, definitely consult with somebody who uh, who knows something about elephants. But from what I've seen in in um, documentaries, they're not intentionally mean. They're like cows here in the U.S. or whatever. If um, if you threaten them, maybe like they might stomp you or whatever. But I don't think that they're they go out of their way to do all that. You know, you probably don't really want to mess with them, but. Anyway, but yeah, to Tom's point, the whole idea is to create depth, right? So like you got the shadows down here, they kind of lead your eye into this darker area. That's the way the the eyes work, right? So like if you look at this elephant, um, the lighter areas are going to catch your eye first, and then it's going to move into the darker areas. Uh, and then we can kind of control this. So like as it's moving into the darker areas, this is one of the fun things about creating art. You can kind of, you can have a little bit of fun. So as it's moving into the darker areas, I can kind of right here, the light is catching on his leg. You can add some extra visual interest uh, so that your eyes have something interesting to do as it's moving through the uh, artwork. Now, I'm not always good at this kind of stuff, but whenever it's actually going well, like it is in this picture, I want to call attention to it. 
because it is intentional. I am intentionally adding, you know, a little bit of highlight to this leg to catch that that uh, light and uh, give yourself give yourself some visual interest to look at as you're moving through this picture. And again, I I, I don't always create pictures that's that good, but in this case, might as well. So you get to see that that leg kind of coming out of the um, the shadows, and I want to emphasize that this is just a highlight, but the rest of the leg is over here. So I need to lift up some of this charcoal with my kneaded eraser. So by doing that, I extend the leg out and and kind of better represent that leg. Because right now, it, like it, you run the risk of just seeing this part of the leg, but really the leg kind of extends up into the shadow bit. So I want to kind of lift up some of that charcoal. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. And then bring that around. There you go. Better, better defined leg, I think. So this is actually kind of cool. I like this uh, elephant. I think I'm doing a good job. <laughs> Oh, eraser. I hate that because these needed erasers. So I drop them on the floor and they, uh, you can't really see it, but they get all this cat fur in them. Like I try to keep it clean in here. Uh, so I, like I, I constantly am sweeping and cleaning the floors and trying to keep all the animal fur out of all this stuff. But nevertheless, whenever I drop something on the floor, like these needed erasers, it just picks up all that animal fur. And then, Basically, I'm going to have to throw this away just because it's like, I don't know, 60% animal fur at this point. Sucks. You guys who have kid, it, it, like kids, you guys who have a animals and stuff, you know what I'm talking about. Let's see. Uh, what did I miss? Um, oh, for March 17th, I'm going to do corned beef hash. Larry. That is a, a mainstay in my house. Like, got to do the corned beef hash. Uh, got to do the cabbage with it. Um, let's see. Elephant skin is crazy. They don't have swipe lands so much as mass uh, compared to surface area that the... Um, yeah, that, that that's interesting. Uh, I didn't know that. Bill Gorman says, I was five seconds faster than Johnny Westmuller's Olympic 100 gear. What are you talking about? That's cool. Mommy Q says, should I bring up the elephant in the room? I love it. You know, Mama Q is basically the king of, or queen of dad jokes. Even though it's Mama Q, queen of dad jokes. So, just creating some, some more depth in these, uh, these legs. Just so that you see that this is one big massive leg. And, and it is a lot of fun to um, draw some of these like really rough features and stuff. Like I, I would love to draw um, some more reptiles. And, you know, if the IC is still in the room, you know, he can attest to that monkey or that gorilla I drew. That gorilla I drew had some really textured like palms. Uh, like the um, the fingers and stuff. Whoops! I'll go over here knocking things off. The um the monkey paw. It's not a monkey. I keep calling it a monkey. It's a gorilla. The gorilla paw and stuff was extremely textured, which I thought was cool. So like this elephant has a similar stuff. I would love to do like some reptiles that might have some really cool texture to them it's it's about the texture really let's get down here let's fade that out so again now your eye is directed through the picture because you start up here naturally and then you kind of come down through the dark areas into and this might be a bit much let me lift some of that up and then you kind of end up down here in these like highlighted areas down here so it's it's just kind of fun to like direct people's eyes Hey, Lorraine, how's it going? Thank you. I appreciate it. Nomadic man, man, it's the fifth child. Wow, you guys have big families. Uh, my dad's family had like seven kids. 
I've got two siblings myself. They're both brothers. I would love to have a sister, but none. And then, so like, I thought for the longest time that, um, you know, because I have two brothers, like, uh, maybe just boys run in the family or something like that. But then, but then my brothers, they, they started having like girls and stuff like that when they started having kids. So I don't know how I ended up with two siblings that are brothers and no sisters, but that's just way it went. But all the girls are represented by, you know, nieces and grand nieces and stuff at that at this point. So like, I don't have any kids myself, but my brothers have created so many kids that if I ever want any, I can just go and borrow some. And, you know, you do actually want to borrow kids at some point. So like, if you don't have kids, which I don't, right, you do actually sometimes want to borrow kids because like, um, I don't think they have the circus anymore, but, uh, or the Ringland Brothers circus. Uh, but I, I actually borrowed my nieces uh, and nephews to go to the, because I wanted to go to the circus. But you can't, as a grown ass man, go to the circus by yourself. You actually need a kid to go with you. It's the same thing with like Chuck E. Cheese. You can't go to Chuck E. Cheese by yourself. You need to like go with a kid and all that stuff. There's a lot of kid things that I want to do that I really couldn't do without barring some kids. So I am happy that my brothers have been generous enough to create a bunch of kids that I can borrow for that purpose. Because there, there are a bunch of things, like even going to the zoo, you know, as a grown ass man, you should be able to go to the zoo, but you really can't, you know, you can't go to the zoo without a kid in tow. So Or you really shouldn't eat anyway, because like, you know, kids make things more fun. They, uh, they call attention to things that maybe you wouldn't notice as an adult. Like, like they're fast, they're fascinated by like animals that I probably wouldn't care about. Like, I don't know, like a hippopotamus. I've never really been interested in a hippopotamus, but for some reason, those kids really love hippopotamuses. I don't understand it. Like there's a, um, at the local zoo, well, not local, but uh, Cincinnati Zoo, which is about an hour and a half away, uh, which is my favorite zoo to go to. There's one in Louisville as well that I think is pretty good, but I always go to the Cincinnati Zoo just because like I lived in Cincinnati for a while, so I'm more partial to it. But anyway, um, they have a baby hippopotamus that for some reason just the kids love that stuff. I don't know. Like hippopotamuses are weird creatures. I don't know if I would ever draw a hippopotamus. I feel like I need to now just because I kind of like talked about it so much, but hippopotamuses are weird. But you can just make these random marks and stuff and then do like kind of follow the contours of the body. Create that form. I think that's kind of cool. I feel like I need to fix up this eye. So like right now it's just like a little. Um, only a hippopotamus will do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're just weird creatures. I felt like I. I don't know. I would. I would have said like elephants are weird creatures too. I wanted to draw an elephant, but they are weird creatures. Um, so maybe maybe I'm being too harsh on a hippopotamus. Maybe if I drew a hippopotamus, that whole passionate attention thing that I've been talking about will kick in, and I will grow to love a um, a hippopotamus. I, I always go to scratch my nose, and like I, I end up with charcoal on my nose by the end of the uh, thing. But anyway. Um, Maybe I'm being too harsh on the hippopotamus and I should like give them a shot. I don't know. Hey, creative boredom. How's it going? Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, Tyler. Elephants have massive blood vessels in their ears, which is like, uh, which act like big old uh, floppy heat sinks. Their skin is super absorbent. And when they spray themselves with water, it acts like a sponge. Relentless Mind Works. I appreciate you. You are giving like an educational aspect to this that I would have not have expected. So I appreciate these little facts that you guys are throwing in here. I feel like I should look up some of these facts on this thing, these things that I draw, and I just don't. I appreciate you adding those. 
Uh, Mommy Q says, being the uncle is a good gig. Yes, and I am the cool uncle. I will say that. I, I am the uncle that all the kids really enjoy hanging out with. Um, that's, that's my role. Um, I, I adore the kids. And uh, again, I like, I like having kids in my life because you get to, um, I don't know, you get to be young, uh, for that much longer, you know, hanging out with kids and, and, um, and all that. So I appreciate the kids. I appreciate my brothers for having those kids. They're, they're so awesome. And then, you know, I'm, I'm of the age where I've seen some of them grow into like, like my brothers are still spitting out kids, by the way, like my older brother has another kid on the way, but I'm also old enough to have some grown, um, nieces and nephews and stuff. And it's so, it's so nice. Like, you know, you parents out there, you, you would, you would say this of your own kids and stuff, watching them grow up is so fascinating to watch somebody who used to like shit themselves and their diapers grow into like a like a fine upstanding adult with actual opinions on life and you know interests and stuff like that like both um my all of my nieces and my nephews have turned out to be very fine upstanding individuals but i remember them shitting themselves in their diapers <laughs> you know <laughs> running around eating boogers you know all the stuff that kids do it's just amazing to me Nomadic Bad Man says, uh, I recently saw an elephant and a hippo in a fight. The elephant won. I I don't know, man. Hippos, like, those are... I believe you. I'm just saying that that surprises me. Um, yes, Tyler, I did miss a reference. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Need that dung beetle uh, leading the way, uh, rolling a ball of dung. Yeah, I could probably put a little dung beetle in here. Lorraine says, Jeremy, have you ever drawn a draft? Great question. So I think I'm going to draw a draft soon. So like I was going through and I was thinking of different like animals that I haven't done because I've been kind of like focused on, you know, North American wildlife animals. I haven't really done African, you know, safari type uh, animals. Um, so it really was a question of whether or not to do like an elephant or a giraffe. And I just kind of like, I, I thought about this particular style and I thought the elephant would be a fun way of um, tackling it. But yeah, giraffe is definitely a close second. So yeah, um, probably in the near future, I'll do like a giraffe of some sort. I don't know if the giraffe will be in like charcoal or um, coffee painting or something like that, but I would love to do a giraffe. I really would. And yes, maybe I'll do a hippopotamus just because I've been talking bad about hippopotamuses lately. Creative Boredom asks, uh, how's your day been? I don't know if he's talking to me or not, but my day has been awesome. I hope your day has been as well. I hope you guys are looking forward to the weekend. That's like right around the corner. Tomorrow's Friday, going into a nice weekend. I think the time changes here in... Uh, so sad that I have to say this. Here in the nor North America... I think the time changes this weekend, which is cool. Get those longer days. Start moving into the summer. So just like little bits like highlighting right above the eye here. Really creates that three dimensions that um, Thomas was actually talking about earlier. That's what's so great about this particular style. You've got the shadows, you've got the midtones created by the paper itself, and then you've got these highlights that kind of tie it all together and you've got those basic three layers now you can always you can always get crazier than that but you've always got these basic three layers whenever you're doing like a drawing shadows midtones and highlights by the way i just like drawing like this just because i feel like a real artist or something it's like it's like i'm doing a violin or something that's just that's just for style you could you could draw like this as well, but I I like to draw like this. It makes me feel like a real artist. And then you know you can kind of control control it a little bit different, almost like a brush, like if you're um, working with a uh, paintbrush. It's kind of cool. How are we doing on time? We're at like an hour and thirty minutes. I don't know. I feel like I can get some more detail into this tonight, but. I don't want to overwork it. Kind of 
create a little bit of highlight there. So what's cool is um you can um tissue over here. Give me a second. Uh, you can work in some detail in two different ways. So like you can use the dark to introduce like lines of shadow, but then you can also use the um the light to introduce um little little veiny type features that kind of like just catch the light. And again, if you were doing like a traditional charcoal on white paper, a lot of this would be done by using your kneadable eraser and kind of like lifting up uh, areas, which you can still do. So like, it's really hard to see, but I can still use this to kind of like lift up some areas. But then when you come in with the uh, white, it really adds like a little bit of highlight to it. So you've got that, that sort of range that you probably wouldn't have. Um, with uh, just doing charcoal on white paper by using this tone paper. Uh, yes, I'm ready for a game, Tyler. Sorry. As an uncle to numerous ch children, I consider myself fortunate. However, I find it disheartening when they become excessively engrossed in their mobile devices. Yeah, bloody sad. Snapchat. Yep, that's a uh, that is true. I'll tell you what my problem is with my nieces and nephews since they, you know. They probably don't even watch the show. Um, I can't, none of them are interested in art yet, which sucks. Cause I want them to be, I want, I, I want a little protege, you know, like even though I only recently started getting into art myself uh, lately, I want a little protege to like match, like pass on some of these skills to, but none of them, the, none of the younger ones are like really interested in, um, in art. I've uh I've taken I've taken my nieces and nephews to like um art galleries and things like that and they ju they just aren't interested art museums and so on they're like they love going to things like the zoo but they could care less about um art museums it sucks but you know maybe they'll grow into it you know they're so young you never know drawing with Jeremy and tones yep. Used to call that information relentless uh hobo science. Oh my god, Keith, I haven't burnt down your house yet. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh Lorraine says she asked me to make a Portuguese egg tarts. Yeah, the, you know, um speaking of eggs, I know that's not what you're talking about, but I would love to do like some decorative eggs for like Easter coming up. I don't really celebrate Easter myself because I don't have kids and stuff, and like I feel like a lot of a lot of the Easter related things are kid related, but I love decorating eggs. So I think I might decorate some eggs for Easter on the show. That would be cool. Guess what I found out tonight, Tyler says. Tyler, I have no idea what you found out tonight. I'm sure it was amazing. Uh, Mama Q says, do you know the safest way to transport elephant? I feel like we're being set up for a punchline. What is the safest way to transport an elephant, Mama Q? So I'm going to make this leg a little bit darker to kind of separate it out from this back leg. And blend it out a little bit. Pull this down here. Oops. I can easily do waffles, but egg tarts I have never made. Hmm. Yeah, decorating eggs are always fun. And I think I'm going to um I think I'm gonna go the route where I take the egg and not even boil it. I'm gonna take the egg and I'm gonna poke a little hole in it and drain the egg. <laughs> Sorry, Mama Mama Q uh, finally put her punchline in. Um so do you know the safest way to transport elephants? Mama Q says a jumbo jet. You get it? I think that's funny. I don't know. Jumbo jail. Jumbo, the elephant. Eh. Anyway. I know. I know it's not the best joke. I think it's funny. I think it's funny, Mommy Q. Um, yeah, so like when I when I go to decorate eggs, I think I'm gonna drain it and then I'm going to maybe try see how watercolor goes, maybe ink. I don't know. I don't have any colored ink. 
I'd have to get some. I think I'll just try watercolor, see how it goes. And then try to get like really crazy with it, like as far as detail and stuff. Really highlight this up here and then kind of blend it out. Yeah, I think that looks cool. Yeah, I think we're kind of running out of things to do with this uh, picture, guys. More highlights in here. But we're, you know, coming up on the hour 40 minutes. It's probably fine to go ahead and call it. So when you're doing like an expressive charcoal picture like this, sometimes it doesn't take a long time. I would love to be able to do like human portraits in about this amount of time. Like ideally, if it was under an hour, that would be perfect. Um, but you guys have seen my portraits that I draw of humans. They're not always great. Like, um, sometimes, uh, I would really like to do, so like, as far as goals go, I would really like to be able to draw people just because I want to be that kind of guy, right? I want to be the kind of guy that just draws people and stuff while they're waiting and stuff. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, but you guys might've noticed that some of my, my pictures, they're not always great. Sometimes they are okay sometimes they're like you know facial features are out of place and stuff like that um hey L lorraine br brings up the uh, fish fry thing um so i haven't tried them yet but i i think uh tomorrow i'm going to go to uh, culver's uh just because i've gotten a lot of good recommendations of for culver's um fish and um i kind of saw like a little video about how they make their fish and it sounds right uh so I, I think Culver's is going to be my salvation. And it's kind of sad because it doesn't have the same sort of charm as the uh, Catholic church that does the fish and then you take it to the pub and you have this like fish and chips kind of experience. But, you know, it's good enough. And so I, I feel like uh, I feel like I'm going to try Culver's. And I, I will let you guys know how that goes and see if I, I like it. It may be that it doesn't feel right Cause like it's not that church experience but i don't know it's not my fault they changed the recipe they shouldn't have done that i'm 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 going to write to somebody and complain i don't know who <laughs> thanks mama q keep up the good work i'm off to my daughter's concert en enjoyed that concert i appreciate it um tyler you found out that you're going to be an uncle what no way it's better than that kid um when is the tyler larry turns 49 on saturday <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm still partial to that church. So, like, I feel like every year I'm going to still go there and just try their fish. Um, just because of the tradition of it, I really, I'm I'm a, I'm a traditional guy, you know. And when I find a tradition, I stick with it, even if somebody else changes it. So, I think every year I'm still going to go to their fish fry just to see if they fix their menu. But then if they haven't, then I'll, like, branch out and try some other things and stuff. But I do like that, you know, I do like the idea of doing fish fries during Lent, regardless of whether it's that church or not. So I like, I like highlighting this back here because like I noticed that this back part is actually catching the sun, same as the rest of this. So this is a good way to like really highlight that. I like this picture. I think it looks cool. I don't know what you guys feel about it, but there's some pictures that I do that are like, you know, expressive like this and, you know, really cool stylistically and stuff. These type of pictures make me feel like I'm, I'm progressing as an artist. They don't always turn out this way, but I'm pretty happy with this one. Like, I feel like this could be, this could be a cool piece of art framed up, hanging somewhere, even though it's on this, this paper that I basically like is packing paper. Oh, uh, creative boredom says, um, 
This drawing actually makes me a bit sad because at the local zoo where I'm at, the Asian elephant passed away a couple of weeks ago. I'm sorry about that creative boredom. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I'm sorry that that brings you sadness, but you can consider it like a, you know, a commemorative uh, portrait of your uh, your favorite elephant. Yeah, like, I wish there was, like, a zoo closer, to be honest. Like, the closest zoo to where I live is, um, like, about two hours away. It kind of sucks. This is still an amazing drawing, though. You're honestly really talented uh, with drawing. Thank you, Creative Boredom. I, I appreciate that. Uh, for those of you guys who haven't uh, checked out Creative Bored uh, Boredom's uh, art, um, he is a young artist, up and coming. And, um, you know, I always like to um, recommend channels for, like, you know, the younger generation out there just getting their feet wet in the world and stuff. And, um, you know, Creative Boredom has a very, very rich future uh, drawing pictures. So, like, if you guys want to check out his stuff, I highly recommend it. Plus, he's just so damn funny. Creative Boredom is a funny guy. He, he He's... Uh, Creative Boredom is either going to be a great artist one day or he's going to be a stand-up comedian. I don't know which one. It could go either way. But he's, he's, a, he's, he's a cool guy. Anyway, you can just continue working it. And like as you can see, I've added a little bit of definition here in the backside. And then also underneath the ear where the light is kind of catching. So the light is kind of kind of coming behind the ear at this point so you want to kind of like lighten this up but then it gets dark as it moves into the uh, feet so um i think i can add a little bit more highlight to the nose and then i think i'm probably going to have to call it done um just because i don't want to overwork it the burden the burden of uh doing a uh, loose and expressive style like this is that you know the more you do it, the less expressive it becomes. There is a point where, like, if you're doing a hyper-realistic picture, like a photorealistic picture or something like that, you can never put too much detail and effort into it. But when you're doing something like this that is meant to be loose, there's, there comes a point where it's, it becomes overworked, and you don't really want to do that. And I I don't really know the difference. It, it's something that you'd um, you'd learn over time. I guess, or like experience or whatever. I don't know if I've mastered it, but I do know that there is a point where you should probably like rein it in. You know, the, these pictures are supposed to be suggestive of the animal, not complete, you know, perfect. Every little bit of detail is in it kind of thing. But then again, you know, you do have like detail in here in the form of... um you know, these, uh, these marks that you made. I, you know, I probably should point out that the definition of art or at least visual arts is making marks on a piece of paper and stuff like that. So like, you know, sometimes marks are finished pieces that like, you know, every, every bit's accounted for and every bit's intentional and stuff. And then sometimes it's just, you know, a little bit more fun like this, you know, these marks and stuff are, Kind of just going a little crazy here and stuff. That, that's all fine, too. I'm trying to think. Is he happy? He looks happy to me. He looks content. He looks like a wizened elephant. Oh, crap, it's, happy, it's birthday. I'm sorry, it's uh, Larry's birthday. Happy birthday, Larry. I, I wish you had mentioned that earlier. I would have sang to you. Um, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Larry. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Larry, if you want this elephant picture, uh, whenever it's somebody's birthday, I feel like I need to uh, give them the picture that I'm working on that day. Um... I've done that in the past. So, like, if you want this elephant picture, you just let me know. Uh, send me an email with your name and address. Well, I know your name. Um, with your address, I'll send this elephant picture out to you.
It's the least I can do. Like, you, you're spending your birthday with me on this channel is awesome. So, like, it, whenever you guys have a birthday or whatever, you know, whatever I'm drawing that day is yours. Unless it's, like, you know, something I'm drawing for something else. You can't have my Maker's Mark bottles. <laughs> but happy birthday, man. Really. Seriously. Congratulations on another year around the sun. I'm glad I did spend a little bit more time on this elephant. I feel like it kind of came together a little bit more and with some of the more recent marks that I made. Oh, not till Saturday. Well, pff, come on. You made me sing it for you, like, uh, sing, sing happy birthday to you. I could have come back on on Saturday and done it proper. I want my I want my song back, Larry. You kind of misrepresented the uh, the situation here. It's not actually your birthday yet, but I'm just kidding. Happy birthday, early. Fred Flintstone had a mammoth for a truck. Yep, there were pets and transportation. Put the whole family on the mammoth. Yeah. Jeremy, his birthday is Saturday. Yep, Tyler, appreciate it. Yep, that's what I get for not paying attention. I screwed up. All right, so I do think that we're going to call this done um, for the night. But I, I was just kidding, Larry. If you still want this elephant picture, just let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to, like, put it up on the wall or something like that. We'll call it Honorary uh, Larry's Elephant, even if uh, even if you don't want it. But happy birthday, man. Seriously. All right. Yeah, I'm going to... I think I'm going to wrap this up just because, like, I can hear the cat back there and... And, um, you know, we're about at the right time. And I, I don't really want to overwork this elephant. I think it turned out really good. Like, if you scrub back to the beginning, kind of drew this a little bit free form. Again, it's my first time ever drawing an elephant. Um, I like the shapes that I'm dealing with there. Again, the uh, process is that I kind of, like, squint at the uh, reference picture so I can kind of see the shadows and so on. Um, I do like the shapes of an elephant. I like the features of an elephant. I like that you've got all of this like scribble stuff in here. This is awesome, to be honest. I do like the style. I kind of feel like I want to do a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle now for some reason. I don't know why this picture is making me think of that, but I want to do a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle in this style. Like they had that rhinoceros um, bad guy mutant. Maybe that's why, what's making me think of that. But for some reason, that's what I want to do. Anyway, I like this style. Uh, Hater says, my birthday is on Sunday, guys. Oh, Mark says, hey, happy birthday to you too, man. Jeez, everybody's got birthdays. That's awesome. Uh, maybe Jeremy should draw Zeus and Bandit on Saturday. I'll send a pic. I am busy this Saturday, but I will draw your pets for you in the near future. But yes, uh, send me those, uh, Larry. I will be happy to work on those. Um, Hater you got a birthday coming up, man. Just let me know what you want drawn. I love taking requests for people's birthdays. Um, there are a number of pieces of art that I need to get done and stuff, so I don't know if I'll get to it right away, but for sure. I want to... Uh, birthdays are special, you know? I want you guys to have good birthdays, you know? And if there's anything I can do to help with that. I know I enjoy my birthdays. Like, I always look at myself as king for the day on my birthday. Anyway, I do think that this is about done. So I'm going to go and call it. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a Thursday night. Um, yeah, this weekend I'm a little tied up. I'm going to uh, Comic-Con. I'll let you guys know how that goes. I don't know what artists I'm going to be paired up with, but if they're like, uh, you know, if there's somebody that uh, you guys would recognize, of course I'm going to let you guys know. Probably the best place to uh, find that kind of information is on the community tab. I'll, uh, I'll post their works and stuff like that. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. But I don't know. I, I'm at least going to go to one day of the Comic-Con. I'm scheduled for three. I may not do all three. I've got some other projects i got to get done this weekend. But, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, dog's going right. Animal's going crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and call it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this picture of this elephant. I really enjoyed doing it. Again, it's the first time I've ever drawn an elephant. And I just love this style. So expect me to do more things in this style. I've got I've got a crap ton of this paper. Again, 75 square feet. That's a lot of paper. So this paper really only works 
for charcoal pictures and then maybe pastel pictures. So maybe I'll introduce some color in the future, but expect more pictures in this style just because I have so much of this paper. Um, but anyway, uh, that's it for me tonight. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a Thursday. Let me go back to this. Um, little kitty over in the corner, by the way. Yeah. Hey, Archer. Archer don't care. Um, anyway, appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, happy birthday to the guys that have uh, birthdays this weekend. Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday. Oh, and Tyler's got some interesting stuff there, too. I'll reach out to you, Tyler, on the Discord and follow up with you. But, um, yeah, um, I'll be back on Tuesday. Hopefully, you guys all have a good time till then. Uh, that's it for me. See you guys. Bye.